Good morning everyone. Today I will be presenting on comparison of a novel prototype device with portable non-midriatic devices in DR screening. So this is a 45 degree field of view in comparison with 120 degree of view. Uh, just to show how much wide area we can see in a wide field image. So as India is the second largest diabetic capital of the world, there is a huge population with diabetes and if we go by dilation to screen each patient, then the amount of resources and time we can estimate how much it will be. So is there any viable tool to do this mass screening? So this is currently one of the devices which is used in the diabetic screening camps for fundus screening. This is a topcon device which captures an ultra high, wide, uh, high resolution image for the fundus. And this is our prototype device which uh, not only uh, takes wide field view but also is a non midriatic device. So just to see if uh, our device can be compared with the other devices, we decided to do this study and to compare a novel prototype device with a non midriatic fundus camera in DR screening. The objective was to assess the rate of lesion detection in prototype device and comparison of DR detection rate. It was an observational study. 750 eyes were screened at Shankarai Hospital, Bengaluru. non midriatic images were captured with both the devices. The reference device was taken as Topcon DRI fundus camera. The images were graded by a single vitroretinal specialist and the image clarity was graded according to the photo aid study. The inclusion criteria were known diabetic age 18 to 65 years consent for fundus imaging and the exclusion criteria was dense media opacity. The prototype device was jointly developed by Shankarai Hospital and Remocon Inc. USA. It uses a transpalpebral illumination which is a validated tool for fundus imaging. The fundus images were captured with Android smartphone. Green and yellow light were monochromatic light were used which were transmitted with optical fibers from a specific device and the image settings were controlled with a specific cap. So this is the device as you can see in the image where the illuminator is kept at the pars planar region above the either super uh, upper eyelid or the lower eyelid and the image is captured through a relay lens system and taken on the camera. So in results, the images were grading as I told according to the photo aid study. So grade 5 is the ideal image. Uh, more than grade 3 were about 80% in our device and less than grade 2 were about 20 per 25%. Whereas in the reference device, uh, less than grade 2 were only 5%. Uh, about 20% images were non-gradable in our device and only the gradable images were compared in the study. So for diabetic retinopathy detection, any DR and referable DR, there was no significant difference between our device and the reference device. So when we compared the lesions, the hemorrhages were about 1.2 times higher, heart exudates were 1.4 times higher and proliferation was as about three times higher than the 45 degree field of view as compared to our wide field, uh, wide field view. So this is a image showing in the reference device as mild NPDR but when we see this image on the wide field view there are peripheral hemorrhages which upgrade this stage to a moderate stage. So mild to moderate, uh, so there were about 10% cases mild change to moderate st stage. This is another image showing moderate NPDR in the reference device but when we see in the, uh, this image on the uh, prototype device we can see the peripheral neovascularization in this uh, image and from moderate to severe category the proliferative change about 10 percent. So this is another image in which we can see uh, a proliferation in the posterior pole in the ref uh, reference device but in the larger image we can see the peripheral combined retinal detachment. So there were about 20 percent cases which changed from PDR to high risk PDR. So about 40% cases there was upgradation of deep, uh, diabetic retinopathy owing to the wide field imaging. So this is a beautiful image which is captured on our device. Uh, if we see this image on the reference device, there can we, see, uh, we can see a proliferation along the arcades, but we see the, uh, which makes, looks like stable posterior pole. But if we see the similar image on the wide field, we can see the nasal pre-retinal hemorrhages and temporal also. So which suggests activity and neovascularization and uh, further laser or further management is required. So when we measured the kappa, there was 0 .4, uh, 0 0.45, which had a moderate agreement for referable DR with the reference device. So for th to uh, further validate our device, when we measured the images from the top one with our prototype device on the image J software, we found that at least 50 micron resolution can be seen in on our device. So just to show, uh, uh, we can see hard exudates on the reference device and similar fundus photo on the prototype device if we just see the posterior pole photo. But these much of extra lesions can be seen in the wide field view. 
So when we measured, it, uh, it was about 1.5 times higher than the reference device. So in discussion, there are other uh, studies, published studies in which they have uh, seen the uh, image the fundus on the optos versus non mitreating and our results are almost comparable with them uh, in the identification of DR, uh, about 5% more DR detection rate and vision threatening also about 3 to 4% more DR detection rate. So in advantages, we would like to tell that it is a wide field view, non midriatic less time for screening, identification of peripheral lesions. The disadvantage is a short learning curve, about 20% were ungradable images, and vessel wall shedding. So we are trying to rectify this ungradable images and future will come up with something better. So the take home message will be non midriatic a wide field view, and higher number of lesions. It can be used for telescreening as well, and it can be as a used as an effective screening tool. Thank you.